Hello all of you out there and in today's video I'm going to show you the top 10 most elite Arc Dinos. And first up on the list we have the Kano. And this creature really does just feel premium and elite to me whenever I use it. Albeit it isn't the most powerful creature out there and loads and loads of people prefer the aloe over this thing. But I'm not really one for the aloe hype. I don't know why. It is a great creature with a wealth of abilities and it is a much more powerful creature than the Kano. But just I just don't like using it at all and I have no idea why really. But when I use the Kano, I absolutely love this thing for so, so many reasons. Namely, its size. This thing is the perfect size for me. It always always is the right size for what I need it. Yes, it's not going to be the perfect size for caves, but you always have the baryonyx for that. And a small carnivore kind of makes me feel a little bit more comfortable as I feel like I can sneak around the place more easily. But I'm not a PvP player, so that isn't really essential to me. And also I do like the speed and the stamina that the Kano has too, which some other Kanos lack. Other Kanos, other carnivores lack, not other Kanos. Well, it depends on the level, really. But the aloe, again, it does have great stamina, too. And maybe faster than the aloe. I don't know why I love the Kano so much. Well, I, I do know why. But I just, I don't really know why I don't like the aloe at all. But either way, this thing also does have a really great bleed ability, which works in its favor. And it deals a heck of a lot of damage. It is really worth to get the Kano someday. But if you're more of an aloe person, then go with the aloe, I guess, but I can never really like that creature, and I don't really know why. <laughs> Next up, we got the Therry, and this creature has to be included on the list. Like, the Tickle Chicken is one of the most essential harvesting dinos in the game. It, it just has to be here. It is a great gatherer of fiber, wood, thatch, berries, all of that it is great at and it is also really great at harvesting meat as well as this is one of the few herbivores which can actually harvest meat which kind of doesn't really make sense as it's a herbivore but you know we'll just go along with it its claws are really really ones to be scared about which isn't really in reference to what i was saying i don't really know what my trailer thought was there either way its claws are obviously where all of its damage is going to come from and its saddle is unlocked at level 69. nice and you know that michael rosen joke is just perfect and i always have to sneak it in whenever i get the chance with the theory top tens and yet, the Therry also has another great use on the island. This thing is an extremely useful creature for the dragon boss fight. One which seems like on the surface, why don't you go for a Rex? But when you dive and you analyze that boss fight, you realize it's got a pretty nasty ability that really, really affects carnivores, but herbivores not so much. <laughs> Next up, we have the Snow Owl, and this creature just has to be on the list. It has so so many great uses that i can't discount it and it definitely has that very premium feel and it feels like you're being treated right and on top of the world really albeit this isn't the most powerful creature out there but i don't really get that premium feel out of the most powerful creatures as with creatures like the giga this stamina is abysmal and i kind of feel like I've been scammed a little bit. The Giga is still a great creature, I'm not saying it's rubbish, I just don't really get any kind of premium feel from it. Whereas the Snow Owl, this creature is just absolutely great when it comes to controlling this thing, which is, in my opinion, an essential part of a creature. If its controls are just awful and feel awful, you're not really going to like using that creature, but it's just so satisfying to glide around and use all of its abilities. For example, that heat seeking ability. Not too useful for PvE players, unless you're obviously searching for a small tame or a creature which has gone missing of sorts. Uh, but on the PvP scenarios, this is a lot more useful as you can track down some players if they try to raid your base or if you think they are trying to raid your base. Also, you want to level up loads of stamina on these things as they heal really, really quickly, obviously, when they have the enough stamina. Because that's an ability where they have, which you've seen there, they will essentially just freeze all the creatures around them in a radius and then boom, like that, they heal up. Which is actually slightly better than the Deodon's healing ability in some cases. 
unless there's just loads of enemy creatures around in your near proximity as you're also going to be healing up those but if you're healing up a wild creature which you're trying to tame as you've just chucked loads of trank arrows into it and it's about to die that's a really really useful pve scenario for it now i talked about the barry earlier and the barry just has to be on this list this is probably the best caven creature next to the shadow main in my opinion that is another great caven creature but I should always go back to the Barry, probably mainly for nostalgia reasons, as you could say so many things which are better about the Shadow Main than the Baryonyx, especially when it comes to mobility. But still, the Baryonyx is a very mobile creature, and for its day, when it came out, this was, like, just, it was just the best at caving. And sadly, it's been overtaken by creatures like the Shadow Main, but I still use this thing for some reason, because nostalgia is a big thing in my arc playing. I know. I'm not the most efficient player. Some people will get angry at me for that, but I just love the nostalgia around this creature. But it is still definitely a very, very useful one to this day, which many people use, again, for that caving. But why is it so good for caving? Mainly, obviously, because its size and the fact that for its size, it deals a really nice amount of damage and has a good enough health stat to keep up with it, as you don't need the biggest health pool for cave runs, as you're probably not going to be in there for that long. And if you press right click to these things will do a spin attack which can stun creatures up to the size of the megalodon and it is a good shout if you want to do some underwater caves too due to that ability obviously <laughs> speaking of the shadow main we do have the shadow main next and i have to put this thing higher than the barry like i love the barry so much but for everything else apart from caving the shadow main just has such a premium and elite feel to it if the xbox is were to sell the 360 elites again so the shadow main would definitely be the 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 chosen creature over something like the baryonyx again its mobility and its controls they just feel so so smooth like just look how high this thing can jump it's absolutely insane these things can travel immense distances and for land creatures it's insane and if this came out on arc the island in 2015 people would have been so so shocked but you know gen 2 is a really really op map and it isn't just great in the skies as well it feels amazing in the water too don't take that out of context i plead you not to take that sentence out of context but their only real downside is obviously the fact that the taming method is absolutely awful or at least it is to me but you know a lot of people agree with that statement <laughs> right next up we have the reaper obviously the reaper queen no the reaper king not the reaper queen what am i talking about you can't tame reaper queens you can tame reaper kings but for some reason i made this barrel with a reaper queen don't ask why if you spotted that well done you can effectively identify a reaper queen apart from a reaper king but either way the point still stands it is still a reaper of sorts obviously no reaper queen tames that doesn't exist reaper king tames on, in terms of their taming method though, it is definitely one which somehow feels premium even though it is one of the most annoying taming methods in the game probably and there's just, there's so many steps to it but once you do it and while you're doing it you just feel like you're on top of the world as long as it's going well. If it's going awful then the premium experience is not there. But once tamed you really do feel all of the effort that you put in. This creature is so so powerful and it just tears through everything on arboration and nothing really can compare to it and if you want to add a little other arboration creature as an honorable mention it's not little the carcanos is a pretty elite feeling creature as well but sadly obviously it has not made this list <laughs> now we have the maywing and when it comes to traveling this creature simply has to be put here its controls feel so good and my main claim to fame with this creature is the fact that I have done the Alpha Maywing race mission with this thing, which a beginner Maywinger, if that's the correct verb, Maywinger, is that a real, is that, it's, it's a verb now, Maywinger, it's not, it wouldn't be a verb, what am I talking about? Either way, a beginner Maywinger wouldn't be able to do it on Alpha, probably on Gamma though, that is quite an easy, easy mission to do on Gamma. But in terms of obviously their premium feel, these things feel even more premium due to the level you actually get these things at. And on Gen 2 you can get these things as early as level 19 and use them as early as level 19 because that's when the saddle's unlocked. Obviously you can tame one before then, but you unlock the saddle for this thing before you even unlock Trank Arrows and that's insane. 
Because every single time I've tamed this thing, I've used train carriers, apart from one which I did with the club, so technically that's a lie. Also, they do have a very premium feel when it comes to the milk which they produce, being a portable feeding trough, and it just gets a lot of the hassle away from breeding. And they can gather berries too. It really feels like this creature is just packed with every ability which you could really want out of it. In at number three is the RG, and the RG just has to be put in that top three as the RG is that creature which I always look to when I go for metal runs and the premiumness if that's even a word over the Pteranodon is insane in fact that even sometimes in my gameplay I won't even go for a Pteranodon I'll just go straight for this creature if I fell up to taming it as um I usually don't trap these things as I'm a bit stupid when it comes to taming RGs so I usually give myself a really really horrible time with these creatures which is sometimes why i struggle to tame these things it's it's really stupid i should just make a trap they're not that difficult to tame they really aren't i wouldn't say they're difficult at all just um i like to play arc the difficult way does anyone else do that with RGs as well or is that just me also in terms of the creatures which they can pick up as well they can pick up a wealth and the dodicarus and anki are going to be great pairings with this thing as they are great gatherers of resources and this is really the creature which is going to transport you from areas of when you're gathering resources as it has weight reduction on things like metal crystal obsidian those resources which are ob obviously don't know why i can say obviously they're very very essential to any arc player's life in terms of you know actually completing the game they're very useful resources also it's saddle actually has a portable smithy which not many other creatures have and it has a nice little neat regen ability on top of all of that too so why don't you just tame the rg just just tame this thing in at number two we have the desmodus and is there any creature which really treats you better than the creature which is in at number one on this list obviously this is in at number two well not really and that is obviously why it is in at number two this creature feels so elite in its form like nothing really gets better than desmodus apart from thing number one but in terms of its uses that sanguine elixir is an absolute game changer for doing any kind of taming as a third of it's done for you and for official arc players out there that is an absolute godsend and i'm sure you'll be taming these things as quickly as you possibly can and someone said recently well this thing really isn't a great creature because it can't pick up stuff and i don't really use that out of a flyer surprisingly and i prefer all the other abilities this thing has like gliding being able to go invisible not on the extinction wastelands as it's never night don't know why i chose this map and also just the fact of how cool this creature is to ride around i don't need that ability and it doesn't need it at all and in at number one is the deinonychus and i just have to put this thing in at the number one spot as its controls feel great and all of its abilities which i'll get to in a second are so good not even any other art creature can actually have the claim to fame ability which this creature wields obviously why it's just such a useful creature its first ability obviously being that it can obviously i don't know what am i saying the first ability sorry the fact that it can grapple onto creatures and just absolutely tear them to shreds and that is something which you can't see on any other art creature it has that and it has even more abilities too obviously it's going to have that pack buff and the bleed ability that you saw there it's going to deal bleed damage which is great for any carnivore to have i was going to say essential there it's not as not all carnivores have the bleed ability doesn't really make sense when you think about it but it is very very nice and its main claim to fame is it can deal that on bosses too which no other art creature as far as my knowledge goes can do comment me down below if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure there's no other creature either way this is one of the best boss creatures out there and you have to try it especially with that pack buff they are great in packs and with that bleed man these creatures are insane and they're also really good at parkour as well and their controls feel really nice when you get them right and i'm not the best deinonychus parkourer if that's even the right word for it as i'm a, I'm a bit rusty i haven't really practiced with these things a lot in recent times but definitely tame yourself a deinonychus in at number 10 we have got the crystal wyvern and i really do like this creature and i find especially when it comes to its elemental abilities it is on that creative 
sides. While the normal wyverns are still very good in my opinion and I still very much like them as creatures, I really enjoy what the wyverns bring to the scene. These creatures are fast and agile and especially when coming to the crystal wyverns, their elemental abilities are not something to be reckoned with. They really do have a lot going for them in that aspect they're just so much cooler in a way than oh this creature simply just breathes fire or ice or poison which is still cool but having the ability to suck the life out of enemies and you know maybe shooting water you might say isn't the coolest thing but still that blood crystal ivan is the favorite of mine i love the ability that it gives off and from model design as well these things are all looking way nicer and the tame method in my opinion is a little bit more interesting well, yes, it's fun and enjoyable to go down into the depths of the Wyvern Trenches and find whatever you can salvage from there. You're really not going to get the same enjoyment, at least I don't get the same enjoyment from doing the passive tame with this creature as I find that to be much more enjoyable from my perspective. Then at number 9, we have got the Mantis, and come on, this creature does deserve to be here. With its huge variety of abilities, it deserves to make the list in my opinion and although maybe it's not the most popular one which is why i've moved it back a bit because i do take your accounts and thoughts a little bit into consideration in these lists because after all you are the community that this channel sort of built upon and i do like to kind of you know call out shout out and whatever and sort of take your opinions into consideration when making my list as well as I kind of want to make these uh, be lists that you like as well as I agree with too I'm not going to go with something that I completely don't agree with but you know maybe a little bit of a mix and match a little bit of compromising but the Mantis for me is definitely one of mine from my mind I love going around and just shredding through many Ovis on Ragnarok and getting tons of moss on this thing. They're great for metal gathering as well. You can get picks on this thing. The only thing you really do have to be careful about in some sense is durability does drain it much faster on a Mantis than really just you using it by hand but it's so much more fun and so much more enjoyable. You might as well give it a go and they're not the hardest tames in the world. They can take a little bit of elbow grease but it shouldn't be too bad. Coming up next, we have got the Andrew Sarkis, and I really just find, as a concept, this creature is quite an enjoyable one. From just its very creative model design, really adding a lot to it, literally having a gun on the top of its saddle. Also, I find the way that it moves is pretty creative and enjoyable as well. I like this creature in a lot of ways more than something like the Thylot or the Sabertooth because it just seems to bring a lot more to the table. Again, that mobility on this creature is purely insane and I can't get around the pure insanity of just how much I love a creature like this. It really does go hand in hand with my playing style and the gun on the top is just a nice neat extra that I just really enjoy. In at number 7, we have got the Ron Ignatha. Come on, these are sort of the kings of the island as a map, and they're sort of unbeaten in that aspect. These creatures really do a lot in terms of travelling, at least for me, and especially considering you can pick up things like vaults and just get immense amounts of resources across the map with absolute ease, and obviously you can carry Rexes and Parasotheriums around the map like there is no tomorrow it's obvious why these things are going to be useful and although while their weight isn't the best off of the bat uh, but considering again you can pick up those um those safes that you're going to have no issue as that does not add weight to the creature at least as far as i'm concerned it doesn't that's kind of a, a cheat really so you don't really need an insanely high weight stat but you do need a vault which can take a little bit but trust me it's not too bad and at the stage you're going to be taming one of these things i think that's sort of just going to be the norm like come on a creature like this is going to be unlocked in the very late game at least in terms of the saddle level and taming one is probably going to be even after that the tame method isn't too dissimilar to the reaper which isn't actually on the rest of this list but i'll give it a brief honorable mention here as i do think the reaper is a very nice one on aberration and it does add a lot to the map but not maybe the most creative because it essentially is sort of a copy of the Xenomorph from Aliens, which is why I had a little bit of deterrence from putting it on the list. But the Ranaganatha definitely does need to be here. It's essentially a completely new creation from Wild Cards, and I really do like what they've done with the creature. It's cool, it looks amazing, and 
Functionally, it truly is a fantastic one, which you should not underestimate. Continuing on, we have got the gas bags. This is sort of a creature like no other, at least in my opinion. These things are peak when it comes to hug, at least in my opinion. They're so cute in terms of their model design, and they really hit hard when it comes to travel. They can do quite a decent amount, which maybe you wouldn't expect from a creature like this. But the fact is they just use oxygen as opposed to stamina just, you know, to fly around the place. This also does add defense to the creature as well, so that could come in potential use. And while they're not fighters and sometimes maybe not the most mobile, no saddle is actually required to ride a creature like this. And I find it really isn't that bad in terms of mobility and you can still get around and their incredible weight is extremely useful in something like this for you know generally getting around and carrying lots of resources for you. You're not going to need a safe like you will on the Brano Ganata but this is a creature which will be taming and unlocking in terms of saddle way earlier than the uh, the Brano Ganata. It's, it's lower grade in terms of creature but I actually sort of prefer it as a tame but that's just my general preferences coming out there. I really do like the gas bags. I think it's cute, it's cool and it's sort of something that's never been done before and nothing has ever been done like it afterwards and it still stands to this day as a very creative art creature. Coming in at number five we have got the Astrodelphus and this really is one of those creatures where there's sort of nothing that really compares to it apart from the Troponatus. Again that sort of gets another honorable mention here as they do kind of tie hand in hand as creatures but essentially they are really just fast beasts and the astrodelphus does just literally mean space whale but no sorry space dolphin astrocetus is space whale this is the dolphin and not the whale but i really like the design that has gone on with this creature and the troponathus isn't as creative as it was actually just a creature that came out an arc but the abilities that it has around it are inherently creative but this creature still takes a list for me as it is a completely new idea from wildcard following on from the astro cetus of course it takes a lot of inspiration from it but it's that kind of lighter variant in a way it travels with a lot more speed and grace than the astro cetus and also you know just purely in terms of design and looks again I love it and the Astro Cetus is really cool as well that's quite an interesting creative tame but sadly that creature is not making the list continuing on we have got the Shadow Mane and come on a creature like this really does deserve to be on the list at least in my opinion it's a creature which is just so jam-packed for of abilities it deserves to be here in my opinion obviously originally coming out on gen 2 it really did shock many players when it came out and it was something so creative it also was like the highlight of the gen 2 trailer so it's got to be on this list for its creativeness i love it as a creature its mobility is something which you really don't see on a lot of creatures the fact that it also can charge up its damage and attack with just a big massive slash on top of having the hydration buff and the bleed ability that works even more effectively on a creature like this especially considering its size and the fact that it doesn't need a saddle it's just simply once you turn to one go ahead and just go out there and battle really because they are very decent at it. The Great Swimmers too, but considering their codename Lionfish Lion, makes sense. The only disappointing thing about these creatures is, you know, they've been nerfed since release, but still great, and their tone message is just so annoying. In number three, we have got the Velonosaur, and this is just one of those creatures where I think it needs to be on the list for me. Nothing has been like the Velonosaur, just in any sense, before it and after it nothing really can compete with it in that sense there is nothing like it i just love this creature and the ability that it offers where it just shoots its spines from its body into enemies and it can shake them off to them as well it's something which you don't see on art creatures and you haven't seen on art creatures since you know this thing actually released obviously the Arvalonsaur is a good upgrade to it spawning on gen 2 and I love that creature too but it is the same one at the end of the day and that shows its creativeness nothing is like it and it works really well and effectively maybe not at the range that I'm showing you here but still I think it stands and at longer ranges or mid ranges which is probably where you're going to be using this thing the most it really does work effectively to ping off those enemies 
it's sort of like your own personal turret and while you could use turrets it just seems like a more enjoyable way to use it like this to have a creature like this to use as a turret i wouldn't use it in a pvp scenario like a turret but still for going around by yourself you can ping off enemies from afar before they even get to you okay number two we have got the maywing and this creature is one where I just love it. Okay, it's so good at traveling and its model design is fantastic. It works really well as a creative creature. Would you expect a giant gliding flying platypus from Genesis Part 2? Not really, no, but that's what you're going to get. And at level 18, you unlock the saddle for this thing. It's an absolute cheat code when it comes to travel. Actually, it's really innovated the gliding space. It's just so good at doing its job, at least in my opinion while the rock drake is another great addition to this i find the maywing does this job far better than any rock drake ever could and you know of course for that reason that's why i'm putting the maywing on the list and not any kind of rock drake you should have no issue flying around with something like this maybe unless you're going up a steep vertical wall but even if you're in the ocean you're still going to be fine with a creature like this as they're pretty decent swimmers and they can also skate along the top of the water too which you might not find on some other arc creatures they're great for a portable feeding trough as well which you can probably tell from that slightly disturbing animation which is on the screen and they also gather berries too what's not to like and in number one, we have got the Blood Stalker. In my opinion, this is the most creative thing that Wildcard has ever done. It is a huge favourite of mine, and I love how this was a creature essentially just designed to work on one whole map and be the one sole creature to work on that map. It is a beast at traversing Gen 1, and since it's the only real effective travel mount on the map, it really has been designed for any kind of lava biome, water biome, bog biome, or ice biome, just jet basically everything, okay? The Bloodstalker can do everything, and while it can't walk in lava like a Magmasaur, it certainly is a great swimmer, and it's my favourite underwater tame, actually, if you ever checked out my underwater tames video, I'll leave a card up there, actually, if you want to go watch that, if I remember to leave a card up there, that is honestly a, like, just, it's a great creature for it, okay? And also, quite like the video as well i'd like what i did on the list there because i agree with it quite a lot obviously it is me at the end of the day but even when you get out of the water you've still essentially got a spider-man as a creature and you can just go around the place with absolute ease and you should have no issue with traversing the landscapes you should just have no issue traversing with a creature of this skill in my opinion and also if you're running low on health you can always just nick a bit off another creature you know you might as well they really do stand in my opinion for all of that they are great little critters for traveling around the place and i find they're so creative in design but anyway that is the end of today's video i really hope that you all did enjoy as i definitely did enjoy making this one as always comment down below what is the most creative art team in your opinion and if you didn't agree with my list then feel free to put your 10 in the comments below and i'll see you all later